Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, that is I, where no God is required and that good life is guided by reason, informed by science, and motivated by love. I have my buddy Andrew with me today. Most of y'all know Andrew. He's been with me for, I don't know, how long have we been doing activism together now? Oh, like three, three years, maybe four? Yeah, three or four years, yeah. yeah. So Time we're flies. Some, when you're <laughs> having yes. fun. Yes, yes. So I decided to do something totally different today. Normally, I give a message, a uh, 10, 15 minute message, and then we have the Atheist Roundtable where I have guest people come in and we discuss it. So Andrew had this idea um, about doing kind of a mock debate, because Andrew and I and many other activists talk to Christians all the time, on the weekends, wherever we go, we hear the same stuff all the time. So, Andrew, tell the folks uh, how you came up with this idea and what the objective of our little show is, and then I'm going to play the preacher. This is going to be fun. I'm going to play myself 30 to 40 years ago, and Andrew's going to be, well, I'll let Andrew tell you. Go ahead, Andrew. Sure, sure. Uh, I, my motivation for, for this was the fact that we have a lot of uh, atheists uh, w that we talk to will, will tell us something like, well, I'm glad you guys are out there doing this, but I could never do it, you know, or or they'll watch some of the some of the famous atheists in these in the big debates, you know, debating famous Christian apologists and they look at what they do and they're like, "Wow, those guys are so smart. Those guys really know their stuff. I could never do that." Mm -hmm. And I, I want to dispel that notion. Uh, really anybody can do this. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's great that a lot of the famous atheists out there uh, are so knowledgeable and educated, and they know so they know the Bible backwards and for, f forwards. I, I think it was mm -hmm. Dawkins who said, uh, "Was it Dawkins who said the mm -hmm. best way to become an atheist is to read the mm -hmm. Bible?" Uh, so, and and I know that can be intimidating <clears throat> when you see how knowledgeable they are and how great they are debating Christians. Uh, but you know, don't let that intimidate you. Uh, because as great as they are, and I don't want to, I would never discourage you from learning as much as you can about, uh, you know, the various apologist arguments and how to de defeat them. But really, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. uh, even with almost no knowledge of the Bible at all, it's you could defeat basically yeah. any Christian uh, with. <laughs> you could defeat any Christian. That, that you encounter with one hand tied behind your back. Uh, yeah. As long as you just keep it simple and don't let them take you down these pseudo-intellectual rabbit holes like the ontological, right, the, the weight, weight of the of evidence. evidence. The weight of the evidence is on them. So, you know, yeah, you can learn about the ontological, you know, argument mm -hmm. and, the, and the cosmological argument and all these other things, but, and it, but you don't need to. No. Don't let them take you down the, those black holes because they're they're bad they're bad arguments anyway on their part but it takes a lot of time to learn about those bad arguments and learn how to defeat them and and, and it's great that some guys are doing that but you don't have to no. um, keep it simple there's so basically the whole the whole premise of the Christian faith is just transparently patently absurd on its face mm -hmm. And as, as long as you just focus on that, they got nowhere to go. Right. 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 So that's what I'm going to try and display here. Even me, I'm just, I'm nobody. You know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not nearly as knowledgeable on this stuff as some of the, you know, well-known atheists that we all admire and have paved the way for us. And so if I can do this, you can do it too. Uh, I'm just going to use my basic knowledge of, of the Bible and actually even less. I'm going to tie my hand behind my back here today with David. I'm going to play the role of basically someone who has never even cracked open the Bible. I mean, I've, obviously, you can't live in our society and not know what the Bible is or who Jesus is. But I'm, I'm going to play the role of someone who has always been secular, atheist, never even opened the Bible. And David's going to play his former preacher self. He's going to do what he used to do all the time. Yep. He, I'm, I'm just minding my own business, sitting on a park bench. Oh, he's going to approach me, and he's going to tell me all the good news about right. Jesus and save my soul. Yep. So that's and, and then when we're done, we're going to do a little post-game analysis and see what we can learn from this. Now, we haven't done any full rehearsal. Nope. So we, we went over a couple notes, a couple ideas. Yeah. But we're 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 basically winging this, yeah. and 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 I, I I wanted to do that on purpose because, so if we can wing it and get through it, so can you. Hi, my name's David Oliverio. How oh, are you? Hello. What's your name? My name's Andrew. Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Do you mind if I talk to you for a few minutes? 
Yeah, sure, I got some time to kill. Yeah, cool, I just see you sitting here. Um, I'm a pastor of the church uh, down the street. Um, uh -huh. Have you ever heard the message of Jesus Christ and the saving grace of, of the Lord Jesus? I've, I've heard about it, but uh, you know, I've, I've always been secular, so I've never secular. had any real interest in it. Hmm. Um, well, it's interesting that uh, there's still a lot of people that have never come to Jesus. And if I may share this with you, because it's a beautiful message of the love of God to we people and human beings. Have you heard the gospel message of why Jesus came and died for our sins? Uh, uh, so, so there's a lot there. Uh, so Jesus, this, Jesus came and died for our sins? Yeah. Oh, it's clear. It's clearly what? evident in the Bible. Now, uh -huh. first of all, have you ever read the Bible? No, I've, ne I, I've never had any interest in it, but I, I think I'm familiar with the, the gist of, of it. Jesus is like the Son of God or yes. Jesus is God? No, Jesus is the Son of God. So if you read the Bible, and I would really encourage you to take the Word of God. Now, the Bible clearly tells us and gives us evidence over and over again that Jesus is God. Jesus is the only Messiah of all the religions that ever claimed to be God. He said, I and my Father are one. It says it right in the Bible, in the Gospel of John and other places, that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. There's three of them, but they're one God. That's called the Trinity. Now, I do want to say one thing to you. What was your I name again? My name is Andrew, and, and I'm really confused right now. You're, you're throwing a lot of confusing okay. stuff at me. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Let me back up a little bit. Uh -huh. um, so... The Lord led me to you today. Now, that may sound kind of strange. That's called divine providence. So I was in prayer this morning, and the Lord always sends me out and directs me to individuals. So this just didn't happen by chance. I am here to tell you this is your chance to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, well, well why? You say he led you. Why wouldn't he just talk to me on his own. Why does he need you? Well, God uses people. God, God's ways are above our ways, the Bible says, as uh -huh. the heavens are above the earth. So you can't really think with the natural mind. You have to put aside the natural mind and begin to understand the realm of the spirit because God is spirit, the Bible says, and they that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. So you yeah, have to open up your mind. I don't, I don't have any reason to believe anything spiritual. Well, so, why, you know, I mean, if I saw some evidence, uh, that, then I might have a reason to believe. But see, Andrew, there's so much evidence and God has displayed himself everywhere. There's so much evidence. Would well, you let's, mind? let's get back to my, my, my first question, though. Why, why I, I don't think he adequately answered it. Why, why wouldn't he just come talk to me himself again? He's already been here. He showed himself 2,000 years, God in the flesh. According to this According book. to the Bible. Now, that's the thing. See, I take the Bible as truth. Jesus uh -huh. said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way. One door, the G Jesus Christ, to that relationship with God, the Father. We all had a beautiful relationship back thousands of years ago in the Garden of Eden. Uh -huh. Adam and Eve walked and talked with the Lord, and they sinned. They disobeyed God. They were deceived by the devil. Have you ever heard of Satan, the devil? Sure. Okay, you've read Genesis? No, I haven't read it, but I mean, everybody hears about, you know, at these stories, you know, in pop culture, you know, Adam and Eve, you know, Lucifer, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're just stories. They're just like mythology, like, like Greek mythology. Uh, how, how, why would I think any differently? Well, because there's evidence. This book. But, but words, words on a page aren't evidence. Can I read one scripture to you? Would sure, you be open? Sure. It, uh, just a couple verses. Now, there's this book called the Book of Romans in the New Testament. Okay. Now, this is powerful. Now, here you were asking for evidence. Oh, it's right here. I mean, the Bible says so. Um, it says right here, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, the wrath of God, his anger and wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth, because there's only one truth, and that's Jesus. Because that which is known about God, because you were looking for evidence, here's your evidence, mm -hmm is evident within them. There is evidence everywhere. And I want you to see that, Andrew, so you can know Jesus. For God made it evident to them. And it tells you right here, verse 20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through 
what has been made so that they are without excuse. There's no, there, no there's, excuse. There's a lot to tackle there, uh, you, well, uh, but, but I'll start at the, at the end. You said it's clearly seen. Well, what if I don't clearly see it? I could take you outside and show you the trees. Look at the trees. Look at the sky. Look at the human body. Okay. There is evidence for a designer, a creation, because surely you don't think that we just came from nothing. Well, you know, I don't know, uh, but I know there's scientists who, who research that using the scientific method, and that we're learning more and more about that. But, but let's, let's assume that we, let's assume we did need an intelligent creator, and, and uh, there's a, co that just opens up more questions. Like, if we needed an intelligent creator, then that means they also needed an intelligent creator, right? No, there's only one creator. Now, again, this is all taken by faith. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It could just come from nothing. Well, yeah, but you keep going back to what this book says, but lot, yeah. books can say anything. There's lots of books that make lots of but claims, and different. we know that a lot of them are, that mo you know, a lot of these claims, particularly when they're extraordinary claims, we, we know that they're not true or not to be trusted unless they can provide, you know, actual evidence. Well, there's so much evidence, and number one, Romans I mean, out, one outside says, the book, uh, what evidence do you have? Oh, my life. Life uh -huh. transformation. The Bible says in first, Second Corinthians chapter 5, if any man or woman be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Mm -hmm. I used to be a bad guy. But that's what the other religions say, too. That well, that's what they say. But well, so how do, I know, really, how do I know you're right and they're wrong? Well, it's, it's a faith thing. It comes right down to, the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11. It's a faith thing. It's a gift of God. But see, Andrew, you're closing up your mind. Well, no, I, I, I'm, I'm very curious. My mind is pretty open. I, 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 I'd, I'd like to hear more. But what I don't understand is uh, why is, so why is faith considered a, a positive thing? Like, how, how do you define faith? Oh, it's clearly, I can quote it for you, right? Hebrews 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's your evidence. My evidence is I can't see it, I can't touch it, and you would want to use that scientific method thing you mm -hmm. call empiricism, right? Mm -hmm. To try to test things to see if they're true. But here we have facts and truth, but it has to be taken by faith. Once you say yes to Jesus, if you confess Jesus as Lord, he comes and lives his life in you. It's a I, beautiful I guess, I guess, you know, it's not that I'm closed-minded, it's just that it's like I can't, I can't just make myself believe something on faith. I, you know, there ha I have to have a reason to believe it. There, there, and and the, 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 the reason to believe something is to have some concrete evidence of it. So, like, the, all you've given me so far for evidence is words on a page that anybody could have written, and you're saying all of well, creation is evidence, but if, but let's, let's assume you're right that there's an intelligent creator. That still doesn't tell me anything about that intelligent creator well, or that it's this one, right not here. one of the many others. All scripture given by inspiration of God, the Bible says. So all we need to know about God is in the Bible because Jesus said, I am the word. He's the living word and the word dwells well, Wait a minute, you, he's the living word? You said he died. But he's alive. See, that's Wait a minute, how, how can he be alive if he died? Well, he was risen from the dead. God the Father raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And if there be no resurrection of the dead, your faith is in vain. So as a believer, as a Christian, I hold to the resurrection of Christ. And if I don't believe that he was resurrected from the, from the dead, God raised him to the dead and brought him to into heaven. He's uh -huh. seated at the right hand of God the Father, Jesus is. Okay, wait a minute. So, so what was the point of the dying in the oh, first place? You, well, he... I never, you know what? I feel so bad because I'm a Christian preacher and I forgot to tell you the message of sin and salvation uh -huh. from sin. Remember I talked about Adam and Eve uh -huh. in the garden? Sure. They disobeyed God. God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There was this tree in the beautiful garden of Eden and they were seduced by the serpent Satan. I don't have time to get into that with you, but I would like you to read the Bible because mm -hmm. it's all there. But Eve ate of the fruit. They disobeyed God. They sinned. Sin is a willful transgression mm -hmm. against God's law. And that broke the relationship between God and man. And the only way you, as a sinner, can get back into right standing with God 
is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the mediator. He's the one that, the bridge that brought you back into that perfect relationship with God. And you can have that simply by faith in Christ Jesus. Well, he did, he did, well there, there's a number of things. Putting aside that I, I don't even believe the Adam and Eve story is, is a real story, but, but you didn't answer my question about the, what was the point of him dying? Oh, okay. Well, there has to be a sacrifice for sin because sin doesn't please God. God is holy. A sacrifice. There okay. has to always be a sacrifice. Now, if you read the Bible, I would encourage you to read the Bible. In the Old Testament, there's two Testaments, the Old and the New. In the Old Testament, there always had to be a penalty or a sacrifice for disobedience to God. So the Israelites, back in the Old Testament, had to kill animal sacrifices of the blood of bulls and goats. So they had to kill bulls and goats, take the blood and sprinkle it and pour it upon the people. The covering of blood is a remission of sin. So the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Wait, wait okay, now, okay, this is getting really creepy. Well, You're saying that this you guy wanted creepy. people to, to, to kill and spread the blood of animals. Well, yeah, that's God's ways. In the Old wait, wait, Testament... Wait, that's kind of kind of well that's to kind you of sick that's kind of well, mean to it? you to us in our humanity okay. in our human psyche and mind it does sound weird i'll admit but yeah. once you come to jesus it's not only it doesn't not only sounds weird it sounds kind of repulsive and kind of well, not very likable well the bible does say we rule and reign in genesis 1 8 we have dominion over the earth so these other animals we can pretty much do what we want but that's another topic but there's always a penalty okay. for sin so okay. the covering of blood and the sacrifice of other animals covers the blood. The blood covers the sin. It sounds like a horror movie. Well, no, I, th I think you're just maybe a little angry or bitter, but that's okay. Jesus no, I mean, can I just, change I just, your I just watch horror movies. That's kind well, of the kind well, of thing well, that happens in horror real. movies. I'm talking reality here. Okay. Now, we're talking New Testament. Jesus now uh -huh. came in the New Testament. So God Jesus, the who's the Son of God, but, but is God. Yes, that's called the Trinity. There's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, Three different personalities of one God. So it's, it's a monotheistic religion. There's only one God, but he has three personalities. Okay, that, that, that makes absolutely no sense, but, but, then, but that's okay. Let, let's, I, I still want to get to this, this sacrifice thing you were going to tell me. Yeah, so Jesus became that sacrifice okay. for your sins. We all are sinners. All have sinned. He became, he became the sacrifice by dying? Yes, there has to be but a But you penalty. said he's alive. Well, he, he was risen from the dead. Now, he well, was alive with God all the time in the beginning. Uh, he's in the always beginning, alive. He was yeah. always from the beginning. Uh -huh. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But Jesus came because God the Father commanded him to come back as that lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. Okay. No longer do we have to sacrifice bulls and goats. Now, Jesus had to go to this cross Kind of like died. in that movie, Passion of the Christ. That uh, was, yeah, okay. she saw that. See, that was, no, I didn't see it because I didn't want to see it. It, I, well, it, was, it looked horrifying. Well, it looked terrible. What, it, he did all that suffering so you wouldn't have to suffer and go to, I hate to tell you this, uh -huh. but there's a place, uh -huh. and I believe it's in the Bible, a place, a place called hell where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth well, that, for that, unbelievers. This, this horror movie just keeps getting worse well, and worse. It's well, not, this it's doesn't love. sound appealing it's to love. me. It's love. So love. Yes, God so loved the world. Okay. Why are you giving me that look? I'm because I'm so love. confused. You're, you're telling me all these things that don't, 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 don't make sense. Like, for, for one, you said he, he, sat, he died for us, but then he rose, so he didn't really die. So what did well, he, he sacrifice? And then you're telling me hmm. that there's that about... I've heard of hell is like a concept, but you're telling yep. me that it's real and, yes. and th this 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 God who s didn't really okay. sacrifice his son because his son's still alive is gonna no, no, send he, us he to hell. No, he did die. He died, huh? but God rose him up from the grave. He was dead for three days. He, the did, Bible clearly says it. Oh, okay. So did, did all those lambs that were sacrificed in the Old Testament, did they also rise after three days? Well, the Bible doesn't cool. really give us any information on that, but I think uh -huh. one day I'll understand when I get to heaven. Now, if you, if you become a Christian, you're going to get to go to heaven. I'll be there too. I uh -huh. know I will be. I know I'm going because I'm born again. But when you go to heaven, uh -huh. there are a lot of things we don't know. I'll, that's okay. I would just ask the Lord to give me the answers for things I don't know. Well, and that's why, one thing why he would, would tell me. Why wouldn't he just, 
Well, I want to get back to this hell thing you were talking about, yeah. but first, why wouldn't he just tell us those answers now? Why would he? Why would he keep us in the? Why would he? Well, you know, these are good questions. Or why wouldn't he? Just, um, I, 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 I still. I, I'm, I still go all the way back to the beginning. Why would he need you to tell me this? When, if, why couldn't he just tell me this himself? And then we would, it would cut out the middleman. Well, and, and do all you want God to reveal himself to you? He will if you ask. If you're open-minded but, and you but call the, upon the name of the Lord, it's this particular saved. God. What's the name of this particular this God? This is the one true God. There's only one God. One true God. Okay. I am the Lord God. Clearly in the Bible. Okay, okay so, so oh, good, good, good. Okay, so, so uh, one true God, uh, one true reveal God. yourself to me. Well, you have to be sincere. I don't sense sincerity in you. I sense well, no, a little, no, I mean, I, I, I'm little sinc- arrogance. I'm sinc- no, I'm, not, I'm sincerely okay. curious. Uh, uh, so, so did I say it wrong? What should I say? No, I, I think it has to be from your heart, and you have to be really sincere about it. And you have to be seeking because the, the Bible says, whoever calls upon oh. the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the Lord will open the door. If you really want... Jesus come in your heart and change your life. You knock on that door, and Jesus is the door to heaven. He'll open the door for you, but you got to really mean it. But I so guess I, I guess say, I don't really mean it because I, I, do, I don't have any desire to uh, desire. Yeah, because I'm doing. I'm, well, uh, you know. Can I'm, I can I explain? Okay. Uh-huh. When you become a Christian, uh-huh. there's so many advantages uh-huh. to be a Christian than just being secular like you because. Human nature is bad. I mean, all you have to do is mm-hmm. look around, watch TV. I mean, look at the yeah, corruption. Yeah, I know people do bad things. Yeah, there's a lot of corruption. The corruption yeah. and right. all. Yeah. And the evil and the sin going on. You mean like, like all those corrupt uh, uh, Christians in the Trump administration, uh, like uh, well, Carson and Sessions? and, uh, and well, I and don't want to get into politics with you. But I tell you what. But, uh, that, but I, well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking okay. about that they're Christian and they're still very corrupt. Well, there's some disagreement there. It cor- corrupt to you. I mean, uh-huh. if they're standing up for biblical truth, they're not corrupt. If they're standing up against homosexuality, which is clearly mm-hmm. a sin in the Bible. Wait a minute. Uh, wait. Uh, I'm sorry. Homosexuality is a I, sin. I, I have friends who are homosexual. Well, uh, then I can pray for them too. Why don't you give me their name? Why, why? Is, is heterosexuality a sin? No. Too? This is God. God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve, male and female. That was God's plan. And you know, you know what? <laughs> Wait a minute. So, so what? Ha- so, what does he do when someone's? You said he made people. So, did, okay. so, so that means he made them well, the ones who are homosexual too. No, right? no, no. God made everybody straight, but it was because of sin that distorted. Uh-huh. Uh, sexuality and distorted human nature and cause it to be evil. And the only but they don't way, seem distorted to me. They seem like normal people to well, me. Well, it's not pleasing to God. It's unnatural because God's natural way is man and woman. Unnatural? You mean like like everything here is unnatural? We humans well, no, made this stuff. Well, if it weren't for God, humans couldn't make this. I mean, uh-huh. they, so we're getting off topic. I want to go back to the sin thing, and then you were talking about hell. Okay, we can we can go we could go off that topic, but I got to tell you, so far everything you as we progress in this conversation, you're giving me less and less reason to want to well, like this well, God did, you're telling me no, about. He's love. He loves you. That doesn't he sound like to, love at all to me. He do, no, here's what love is. Uh-huh. Love is, I'm going to go down and take all the sins upon me. Okay. Jesus said this for Andrew, because Andrew was born wicked. Like all humans, you were born with this sin nature. Uh-huh. And the only way for God to look at you and go, you're my son, I love you, is for you <clears throat> to allow what Jesus did for you by faith. Okay, but it's a so many questions. I, I was born with this sin yes. nature, but you said this God created me, right? Yes, he created us. So if he created me with this sin nature, why is that my fault? Why, do, why, would I, why would he need to then go through all this other stuff to save me if he made me that way? Well, uh, that's a good question. But the, again, I don't have all the answers. But we have, this is where you have to put your faith. Faith is very important. Because you, faith, you, you're not giving, you're giving me less and less reason to ha- want to have faith oh, here, in this. Okay, like, I, I want to get back to the hell thing too, but go ahead. What were you going to oh, say? Oh, I was going to say the advantage. Uh-huh. I forgot to tell you. Okay. The advantage of being a Christian. Yeah. There's a thing called 
Christian fruit, Christian virtues that okay. sinful man is it's hard for them to have because many people that are not Christians are nihilists. They don't have a lot of happiness and love because love is only from God. Here's the beautiful thing. When you come to Jesus, it's uh -huh. called the fruit of the spirit. Virtues, characteristics of Jesus come into you when you become saved and born again. But I know love I know, and joy and happiness. I know I know lots of uh, uh, secular and atheist people, friends and family who have love mm. and joy and ha happiness and so I don't what what so you're telling me that, that they don't? Well, I would say honestly my opinion, um, I haven't met too many atheists. Uh, the ones I have met seem to be a little bit angry, and the ones that are nice... Do I seem angry? No, I think you're a very nice person, but I mm -hmm. think you could be happier, and you'd have more love, and more empathy and sympathy and caring and sharing for others, because Jesus will come into your heart, give you eternal life, you can go to heaven and be at peace about not going to hell. And that's the main thing, too. Another advantage of being a Christian, you don't have to worry about uh -huh. me so, so going to hell. Okay, so, so if I'm not a Christian, I'm going to hell? It's pretty clear in the Bible. The wages of sin is death. What you get paid well, for... I'm going to die anyway. No, they're talking about spiritual death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So there is a thing called a born-again experience. You can be mm -hmm. reborn spiritually and escape the wrath of God because there is a time the of wrath judgment. Of, yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, this seems... You're thinking too much, Andrew. You're well, thinking. you got to have I'm sorry. You're uh, thinking. See, that's, that's like Adam and Eve. Maybe, they were thinking too maybe much. you're not thinking enough. Uh, no, I think. I, I do think. I think by using this. I mean, I'm not the smartest guy, so it doesn't take much to... to it doesn't take well, a whole lot of thought to, to, to come up with the... With the points I've made, it's it's pretty much common sense, I guess. But but logic, you know, uh, uh, mm. reason. Well, that's uh, the thing. There's a difference. But but I want to get back to the scariest thing you're telling me is that he, he's gonna send me to hell. Yeah, if I'm it's not pretty a clear. Jesus. Well, Jesus said that he that believeth and is baptized will be saved. Uh -huh. say, he that say, believeth not shall be cursed and damned. It sounds harsh in our natural mind, but it's actually love because there's got to be punishment for sin. What do you do with that, your kids? Not, when I, you're, okay. Do you discipline your children when they do wrong? Sure. There you have it. But there's got to be I, penalty I don't, I discipline. I wouldn't send them to hell forever. Well, again, God's ways are above our ways. I don't understand that. that that's not above. That, that's below. That's, well, isn't that's that something opinion. Satan would do? I thought I, Satan was the bad guy. In, he in is, your, because I'm going to say something. Don't be offended. Satan, does Satan send me that? The down? reason you think this way is because you're using your carnal, earthly mind, and Satan has you bound. I'm actually you not be that, free. I'm actually not that carnal or earthly, if that's what you mean. I you don't drink, commit, I don't smoke. Do you ever lust after women? Not so much anymore. I used to. Well, there you go. There's sin right there. Do you ever lie? Uh, I, I try not to, but I have before. There's a sin right there. That's yeah, all but, worthy of but, separation. But when, like when you'd mentioned my kids, like when my kids do something wrong, I, I sir, I use discipline, uh, eh, eh, but I don't. But, but it, I love them, so I would never send them to hell. That that, well, that so so wait. So no. most I don't. Okay, here's the thing that, that is real confusing. Most of the people throughout human history haven't been Christians, right? Well, I'm not sure. Or about like that. billions of people that haven't been Christians. So well, you're saying sure. this God, uh, this Jesus, who sort of died but didn't really, so uh, is going to send us to thinking, eternal hell if we don't. You're thinking too much. See, that's the thing. Oh, well, I, maybe I, you're not thinking enough because well, that that's sounds pretty opinion, horrible. Because like, how could he love us if he's going to torture us forever? Well, that's love. You, you have why, a choice. He, called, why couldn't he has a choice too of just revealing himself to me instead of he you has talking revealed to me. himself to you through me. No, my I mean, life has changed. Here I am. God led me to you, and I read the Bible for you. And look at the natural world. But mus Muslims or Buddhists or Hindus could could talk to me as well and tell me that they. But that, they don't they, have the truth. There's only one truth. They Jesus think said, they do. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. See, they think they have the truth. You think you have the truth. Well, How is an open-minded person I, I like me going to know? Yeah, it? I don't think you're open. So can I, can I end this? Because i got to go home. My wife okay. is cooking dinner, and my kids are going to be mad at me for not spending time with them. So uh -huh. can I pray for you? Would, you? would you be willing for me to pray for you? Maybe God will reveal himself to you? Well, sh well, yeah, that's all I'm asking okay. is for this God to reveal himself to me. And, and, uh, and then I'd want him to tell me why he would send 
so oh. many people to church okay, eternal me, torture if I, he loves us. Okay, I'm, I want you to. That, that's awful. That's that, that's that's sadistic. No, that's, no, I think you're thinking that's what we call evil, isn't it? No, no. I mean, this this is love. If you read this book and accept Jesus, you'll understand love. So I really have to go, mm -hmm. okay. but I do want to tell you that Jesus loves you, and He led me to you today, and He's got plans for you because this is all planned by God. This is not coincidence. Uh -huh. I got to go. I'll be praying for you, and thank you so much and have a good day. Thanks for helping me <laughs> okay, be that. less okay. of a believer right, than no. I was before. Okay, we're off, we're back to this. So let's talk about this <laughs> real quick and I gotta right. close in a couple minutes. So right. uh, this is usually what happens when I talk to believers, uh, Andrew talks to believers. This is, th this is what we get. It's such a simple thing uh, to do. And Andrew, you did great. You really oh, did. thanks. Yeah, so. It was, it was even easier than I expected it to be because it's, it's, <laughs> it's just so ridiculous and so uh, morally contradictory. Mm -hmm. just, so that's, if you just stick to that, you, you notice I was trying to keep, bring David back to the most obviously uh, contradictory and nonsensical yeah. arguments he was making because he, he kind of, you would notice how he would avoid kind of responding to mm -hmm. those and that's what a Christian does. Always. They kind of like, they try to stay away from the, mm -hmm. the, the really hard yeah. questions and kind of go back to, you know, the gobbledygook about, you know, he loves you he and loves he, you. you know, yada, yada. Yeah. And so if you just, if you just keep, keep their feet to the fire, mm -hmm. don't let them squirm out of that and Th then there's no reason to go into this deeper yeah. pseudo intellectual, Absolutely. you know, cosmological yeah. nonsense. Yep. You know. So we're going to discuss that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go and do an episode on this coming up. Uh, okay. Do supernatural belief systems like Christianity demand uh, philosophical warrant? Do they demand debate and all that? Mm -hmm. It's just going to be really good, and we'll have a atheist mm -hmm. roundtable about that. Right. So, so if I could do this with David, with one hand tied behind my back, not even using the Bible verses that I could use mm -hmm. and 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 on like less than half a night's sleep <laughs> yeah. and feeling kind of crappy right now if I could do this without a college education uh, then you can do it too yeah. don't feel intimidated Just, don't feel like you like it, it, it's easy it's, you know a 12 okay. year a 12 year old with a little bit of common sense and a, a grasp of yep. how evidence-based logic works could defeat even the most scholarly, yep. educated Christian apologists. We do it all the time. How do it you doesn't know? Take much. How do you know? How, remember yesterday? Mm -hmm. We just keep. Right. They make a claim. How do you know? They make a claim. Mm -hmm. We give natural explanations for supernatural claims. We keep putting the weight of evidence upon the believer. So it's a pretty simple case. Mm -hmm easy way to do it. So, yep. hey, that was a lot of fun. Get, yeah. I got to play my former <laughs> self a little bit. You got me riled up a couple times, and I almost lost it and started laughing a few times. Were so. you getting nostalgic for the good old days? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> miss it. I like this a lot better. Right, right. This is reality, and I'm much mm -hmm. happier. Better life. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio and Andrew. Oh, yes, and also, uh, before I forget, uh, check out uh, patreon.com slash thepreachinghumanist if you want to help support what we do. Uh, any, any amount will help. Uh, we, you can even go as low as a dollar a month. Uh, and uh, it helps pay for our activities, uh, you know, going out in the public and, and doing what we did right now, you know, mm -hmm. but, we, but for real, you know, talking to actual theists, sometimes not, you know, usually Christians, but sometimes other religions and, and spiritual beliefs mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so if you go to patreon.com uh, slash preaching humanist, or is it the preaching humanist? I, oh, there it is on the screen. Cool. The preaching there you go. If, if you like what we're doing, you can help us out that way, or you could come join us. Oh, right? man, come out. Yeah. We have so much yeah. fun. And we can show you how easy and fun it is mm -hmm. to when we talk to believers. Just yep. put that weight on them. All right, we got to go. Have a wonderful day. See you next time. Bye.